Welcome to Westminster Canterbury, Richmond. I'm Clay Motley. We are here outside in the Avalon Garden with Annie Tremper, who is our, let's see, your title, horticulturalist? Horticultural coordinator. Coordinator, extraordinaire, I think we're gonna call it. Guru, can we say <laughs> yeah, horticultural guru? That. And we're gonna take a tour here of the gardens right outside the Avalon entrance. Um, I know you've told me before, you get a lot of questions about this, that one, it looks a lot different than a lot of our other gardens that we have. Tell me about sort of the history of this garden, where it came to be, why it looks the way it does, why is it so different from a lot of the other gardens that we have? Okay, so we are working on sustainability, which means encouraging landscaping that is native, good for the environment, good for the pollinators. So this one particular spot seems like a great place to start. Sure. Um, it definitely looks a lot different than the trimmed, pruned, manicured gardens that were the norm. And this one still does have the foundation plantings, which are the taller evergreens mm -hmm. in the back to sort of hold the garden together. Um, but this one is loaded with pollinator plants. So gotcha. there's all different kinds of plants from every, every spectrum, swamp plants, uh, okay. full sun, drought tolerant plants, which are right here along the edge. Okay. Um, this bed particularly has a whole bunch of different microclimates. So there's very shady, very wet areas. Yeah. There's very wet, very sunny areas. There's very sunny, very dry areas. There's just so many different things. Um, the soil underneath it is extremely compacted from all the construction that's gone on right. over the years. So we dug a lot out. Um, but it still hasn't helped us 100%. The drainage right. is not good. It will never be good because it's contained in all the concrete and the right. building. Right. And then you also have the heat reflecting off the building. So it is a work in progress. It We're is. seeing who's working, who's not working. A lot of plants are getting moved around. Yeah. Um, as things grow, things will get shaded, so the environment, their little ecosystems will become better. So you showed me before, we already, you're seeing some success yes. in this garden. Tell me about some of that success. We have 20 monarch caterpillars in there okay. at the moment. Um, we just saw the little milkweed bugs that are in there. The um, Goldfinch are starting to eat the echinacea seeds. Okay. There were three different bees on the salvia. We had the bumblebee, three, three the honeybee. Right, okay. mm -hmm. And then the little solitary bee. Right, so okay. everybody's coming in for what they need, That's which is awesome. very exciting. Yeah. That's great. And the um, the caterpillars that we saw, those will eventually be monarch butterflies, yes, I think you said? Yes, that's correct. And yep. those are important because that particular type of butterfly... Is endangered gotcha. at this point. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have those caterpillars here now specifically because we chose certain plants? Yes, that oh, is okay, correct. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. is they migrate. Here? They're very particular. Gotcha. Um, they start in the north, I think. I don't want to say Canada. I'm not 100% clear on that. But they end up migrating all the way over to Mexico and even further. Wow. Okay, so gotcha. And it cycles. So gotcha. they'll come here, they'll lay their eggs, they'll turn into the chrysalis, they'll pupate, and then they fly off to the next Gotcha. Okay, so mm -hmm. from the time this garden started, some monarch butterflies flew through without and us said, even oh, knowing. And said, oh, you put the said, milkweed oh, for us. Oh, what a great yes, place for us. Laid some eggs. Mm -hmm. The eggs have now hatched, so we're starting to see the caterpillars mm -hmm. here. And then eventually we'll see them. I think you mentioned they like to go in the buildings. Yeah, they usually so go up. They like go in up a tree, in the trees, up in a building. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, a lot of times and you'll find them They'll the form their buildings. chrysalis, mm -hmm. and then from there, they the pupate monarch and off they go. And yeah. so, uh, do you know about how long or when in the year that might be? Is this next year? Is this, this no? Fall? This should be like in within two weeks. Within two weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, so we'll start to see some monarch butterflies mm -hmm. around this area until they, I guess. Then they're going to continue on their trip. They'll just trip. keep flying. Yeah. Away. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty great. amazing. You know, these little tiny creatures can fly that far. That's that's impressive. That's great. That's great. And you know, we can help them. Right. But, you know, we help them through being patient with gardens like these that don't look quite like, you know, the gardens with the right. heavy-duty hedge trimming and that kind of stuff. Right. So, so every garden and, has its purpose. Right. Yes. And these are the kinds of things that will bring back the monarchs and back the pollinators right. if there's right. a more of a transition to things that are sustainable. Um, I know it's not quite as eye appealing initially, mm -hmm. but if you stop and like really take a look, you'll start to see these things that are so cool that you would never see in a regular you gotcha. know, manicured garden. So um, Annie tells you, come to here to this spot, the, the entrance of the Avalon here, and just take a minute and stand and stare at the garden. You'll see all kinds of little things happening that you don't notice when you just walk by real quick. Um, I, you had a great phrase you told me earlier about the age of this garden. Oh, this is a teenage garden. The teenage it's garden, all right. gangly and some of it's malnourished <laughs> and some of it's overfed. And it's talking so back it's to you. To figure and it's, out, you yes. know, just like, yeah. you know. 
<laughs> gotcha. But over the over the next even next year, I guess some of the larger plants will start to create shade in areas where there wasn't shade before, yes. and you'll start. And to then see the, it. the shade plants that are planted specifically underneath them will flourish. Right. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. So the, it'll probably double next year. Gotcha. The, even with the, just next year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, yeah. I mean, great. if you looked in the beginning of the year, and it was little plugs, and right. they've already doubled and tripled in size. Gotcha. So. It'll, That's be, great. it'll be different. Yeah. Well, come it'll see it. Good. It's right here at the Avalon entrance and you have a beautiful garden right here at your fingertips. You can see the monarchs uh, bloom in the next couple weeks, which would be late September, early October. And, uh, and we'll see all kinds of uh, life that happens here that we just walk right by. So thanks for showing this. <laughs> Thank this you. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah.